My name is Ruth McKenna Muga, founder of Gigantomastia Foundation. Come and see how we transform lives and make a difference in the society. On Shajara Yamabingwa. My name is Ruth McKenna Muga, founder of Gigantomastia Foundation. I come from a family of four. I'm the last born. I went to nursery in St. Michael's Primary School. I went to primary Langata West. Then my high school life, I went to St. George's High School. Then I did my Bachelor of Laws degree at Catholic University. I was diagnosed with gigantomastia in December 2010 after having recurrent shoulder dislocations. I went to the orthopedic surgeon and <coughs> When I was having, having my surgery done to fix my shoulder is when he realized I have very big breasts that are attributing to my shoulder dislocating on and off. So he introduced me to a plastic surgeon in Kenya by the name of Professor Stanley Hainga. So after my shoulder surgery was done, I went and visited the plastic surgeon in Aga Khan and that is when he honestly diagnosed me with gigantomastia. I didn't even know I had gigantomastia up until he told me that he have this condition and it needs to be corrected. Gigantomastia is corrected to, through surgery. I went, underwent a breast reduction and scientifically they call it a reduction mammoplasty surgery whereby they reduce the weight of your breast tissues and reconstruct the breast to, re to reduce the size and reduce the weight of the breast. Gigantomastia is excessive breast, breast growth that comprises of 3% of your body weight. As in your breasts are very heavy, they are very big, and you're not understanding what is going on, and they grow rapidly. Not over time, but rapidly. And it mostly happens during puberty, during pregnancy. That is when, because that is when hormones manifest themselves in a woman. So gigantomastia is mostly pegged on hormones on a woman's body. Men also get, they get the condition, but in their, in their case it's called gynecomastia. Mm -hmm. The major symptoms of gigantomastia are heavy big breasts, backaches because of the weight, you see, because the breasts are pulling down your back. Mm -hmm. You get shoulder, shoulder pains, neck pains, sometimes you get unexplainable headaches, but they're all attributed by gigantomastia. Those are the major reasons. And again, gigantomastia, it quickly spirals into have a woman having low self-esteem. You even find some women now, they, they get into a complex now, like, why are you looking at me like that? You see, they get inferiority complex because they always think people are talking to you or trying to get your attention because you have very big breasts. I was lucky enough for when I was diagnosed with gigantomastia, I went straight into theater, as in like, we tried to probe the insurance to pay, they refused because they said it's a cosmetic surgery and they say quite frankly they say it is a pre-existing surgery that they cannot pay for. So I remember in February I went to Nairobi South Hospital here in Nairobi and Professor Hainga came and did my surgery and I had a total of 7.3 kilos off my chest. So when you're hearing breast tissue that is 7.3 kilos, that is not normal. That is too much weight on somebody's chest. And it goes into deliberating somebody's health. Like you find somebody can't do many activities because your chest is on your way. Your breathing is compromised. After surgery, I can say first the shoulder dislocation stopped. At least, you know, I could sleep comfortably, not without the fear that my hand will come out or it will come out of my socket. Then I can say self-esteem, though mine was never affected because I'm a person who's out there like, oh, I, I didn't know even the, f the fact that I knew I didn't it, I didn't I wasn't sick I was just myself but of course your wardrobe would change I think I'm more bubbly I'm more confident in my skin than I was before and what else I, I became more vagogator than I was because I was all out like now I can do me I can do whatever I want to do the cost implications like personally when I had mine done it's in the tunes of 500,000 Kenya shillings, given that it's a plastic surgeon who's best placed to do this surgery. And you see, when a plastic surgeon is involved, people find that it's cosmetic, it's something that is, you're making it better than it was before. So it's very, very expensive. And it's not reachable to the common more 90 as much as 
we have that issue mostly what i would say is it's a hormonal issue when as a woman you know when you're growing up in your teenagehood it's that these hormones are in our bodies that what define us they're the ones that make us know if we have the, the, the ones that define us like you can have breasts you can have hips you know you grow taller in size that is the hormones define a woman so with gigantomastia when you're growing up i feel the hormones now it's like they attack the breast tissues and decide this is where we are going to sit and this is where we are going to make it grow bigger and bigger i could say it's hereditary because if there's hormonal imbalance in your lineage it will it will come down to generation on to generation ever since i started this organization and having trying to create an awareness and making noise about it i can tell you one in every 10 lady probably has gigantomastia unknowingly because of the awareness element others say my mom was like this my grandmother was like this but once those symptoms start presenting themselves it is good to go and get checked and talk about it a gigantomastia has its psychological effects as well you'll find so many women have been stigmatized by their breasts you'll find they have been they've been called funny names like most of the patients i've interacted with you hear them being told wamanyonyo KCC, your afration, you could be conversing with someone, then they tell you, mm. you see, when how you're thinking, you're thinking with your breasts, you know, it becomes very psychological. Women in relationships, when probably they disagree with their spouses or their partners, you find your partner abusing you with, with your bust just because you have gigantomastia. And how, how big is big? If you find yourself changing a bra, like for, from every three months, you keep on changing your bra, there's a problem because you see your bust, is keep, it, it keeps on growing. Scientifically, they were reading like the plastic surgeon say, when you start eating the, hitting the E, the F, the G cups, it is not normal because what does that implicate? That it is more weight onto your chest. That is where you need more, bigger support to bring up the breasts. During the surgery, they remove the breast. You know, the breast is, is made of fat tissue. So they remove all those first fat tissues that are on the breast and the, and the glandular tissues as well. Then they reconstruct the breast in a manner that it is smaller and these tissues have been removed and the excess skin has been removed. It is basically an art when the surgery is being, is being done. I have not seen or heard of a case that has, it has come back given that I'm also eight years post-operative care and they have never gone back to the size they were. I think I've been a constant size from, for eight years from when my surgery was done. Technology has really evolved because I have had cases of where women who have assisted before we did the surgery, they didn't even have enough milk to give their children. But surprisingly, after the surgery is done, you find them calling in say, I'm, I'm lactating normally. I have more milk than I had before. So they don't interfere with your nipple. That is why we say it is an art of how the plastic surgeons go in and they have the surgery done with excellent results. Because you can find after two weeks, your nipple sensation is coming back, but you're still smaller. Gigantomastia is a symptomic condition, the way I'd said before. You can't detect it before if you don't have the symptoms because you wouldn't know. I founded my foundation in September 2015 as a result of women always coming up to me and asking me, how was this done? How did you find the courage to do it? How did you know you have it? So I decided at least it's a high time that I would go out there as an ambassador of Gigantomastia because how many women in the recent past even probably have died without knowing because of the weight on their chest then it becomes the, the, the breast become they get sepsis and somebody dies and you see also the stereotypes that come with it like you're bewitched you're sleeping around with men that is why you have this big breast you understand it that is why i feel there's a need to kill also these stereotypes that are coming along with this issue and also help the young girls who have a brighter future like the 13 year olds you've helped 12 year olds who don't understand what is going on with their bodies. They don't even go to school because they've been ridiculed by their other peers and they're very young. So you can imagine you're 13 by 18, what size are these breasts? Would, would that person want to come out to, be, to stay with the others or to come with them? No. So my major, major part to start the foundation was first the awareness bit and to know that it can be treated locally. You don't have to go to India, you don't have to go to America. We have doctors who do it with excellent results. Some of the challenges I faced is um, funding, you know, of course, funding. 
spouses not coming on board to assist their, their to support their, their 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 wives you can find somebody comes and says you can see clearly she's suffering but when she goes back the husband is like mm, it's normal you're supposed to have breasts you know also men need to come on board and understand that this is a condition that needs to be treated that needs to be given attention it's something medical not that a patient is coming in for beauty but to correct the fact that they're having this back pains, the shoulder pains, that they are not comfortable in their skin in their day-to-day -day activities. From, you know, people are normally curious to ask me, how many surgeries have you done? How many have gone wrong? And I keep on telling them, none of the surgeries that I have performed with my doctors has ever gone wrong, given that we are correcting these issues. I have done 80 surgeries in three years, all very, I'm proud to say very successful. I have rescued young girls to go back to school. And this the latest one that was on television, the viral one of the 30-year-old in Voy that we are still yet to assist. We cannot do it now because she's expectant. But she's on our waiting list and we are going to assist her for for better for her better appearance and for the for the burden to go off her chest my biggest motivator is like any time that i go into that surge, into that into that theater room with that patient and the surgery is done and the patient comes back to you like you changed my life i mean you know it's it it moves you like i've, I've made a difference in somebody's life i've impacted your life in a positive way it, it keeps me going. It keeps me asking myself, when will I go and interact with the next person? And I also feel like, did God put me in those shoes so that I can come out and do whatever I'm doing and impacting the society in a different way? In the case of the young girl who was in Kiambu, that she had just finished her class eight and when she was sharing her story with me, she kept on telling me, I even did my exam on my knees because she was very big. And she passed tremendously. She got 352 out of 500. So, and any time I would see, I see Kate, she, she just smiles from nowhere. And she always tells me, no joke, I'm see you sing kuwa hapa. So we performed the surgery and the governor of Kiambu, the time His Excellency William Kabogo educated her. You see now, you feel like, what if I never met this girl? Where would she be? Because she had gone to all avenues and she was not getting any leeway. So that is, I can say that is one of my biggest, biggest success stories that actually kept me going and keeps me going to date. Anytime I feel like ah, I need to stop, I go back and I look at Kate. Sometimes I think of the girl in Kilifi, Emmeline also. You know, even the fact that she's gotten such medication that she knew that she could not get is like a miracle. Things that some people would probably take for granted these people look at it like a very, very big deal. My vision for the foundation is to build a hospital one of these fine days. Then I'll have to, I can accommodate more and more people, reach out to more and more people, and give them this care that they need. That, that is my biggest vision, to build a hospital specifically for gigantomastia patients. And it would be probably a 30-bed capacity if God blesses me with donors. That's what I would do. Through word of mouth, it's just through word of mouth because of the work we have done or I have done. People, this it's you know, there's word of mouth that there's these people who do this, do this. Because I can say, when this lady for Voy went viral, my phone could not stop ringing. Are the tags on Facebook, the tags on Instagram, the tags on Twitter? In fact, it even hit me. I was like, oh, so this is where I have reached unknowingly. And that's why I can say, I also thank God for also giving me the strength to continue doing whatever I'm doing. This is my full-time job, me helping the girls, but I'm an advocate of the High Court. But now I advocate for the girls more and the women more. My law is not gone, it's somewhere in between the lines of me running this small organization. Oh, my challenge to the society, especially the insurance companies, is to embrace this condition. It is not plastic surgery and let them have a tier of when to know when it's cosmetic and when it is medical. Of course, we know women, they will find that this insurance is paying and you'd find they want to come to enlarge their breast, they want to lift their breast. But insurance should also know that when is it cosmetic, when is it medical, and they should step up and come and pay for these surgeries. For the government, I can say for the government from when I started, they, they are very receptive because they let us use their facilities, but it's probably it's not enough because others sincerely cannot afford completely 
even give them the chance into going to hospital and get this surgery done either at a very subsidized price because yes it is expensive at a subsidized price and also be able to help the very dire cases to get this service availed to them. The VOI coverage was done very well because it went viral on social media and the next people who stepped in were the health county representatives to go and see this girl and take, they took her to hospital. You see, through that talking and through that helping and I would say the biggest challenge as we speak is awareness. You understand? Because if probably even that lady knew that she had the condition early enough, she would not get to the extreme that she, the, the extreme phase she's in now. So awareness, awareness, probably that is what the government can come in and assist us. Same way that they, they sing about polio, same way they would talk about go screen for breast cancer, go screen for cervical cancer, and also if we could make it a national day for gigantomastia, you know, to, to, be, to be let known that this is a condition, you see. And also my message to those people from Mashinani who are stuck to this stereotype of you have been bewitched, you know, it sticks into their heads completely because they're seeing you like this and they have never seen anything like that before. Yes, education levels also in Mashinani are a big challenge to us. If you are suffering from the following major, major symptoms, are you have large breasts, you have continuous backaches, you're getting difficulties in getting brushes because of the of your size of your breasts. You're having shoulder pains. You're having neck pains. Feel free to contact us for more information. So if you can get assistance on the same. To the spouses, and I speak and I say this with a lot of passion, stand behind your spouses. Be able to differentiate when your spouse is in pain, is not in her normal skin in her normal day-to-day -day activities because she's been interrupted by the size of her breast step up even help these women financially because it's a very expensive surgery come and step up and understand that they are having a problem work with your sister try and fit into her shoes and understand what could she be going through and in this in the society do not stigmatize people by calling them names even sometimes you don't want to be with them because you feel that they don't look like you. You seclude them from, work, by, from staying with you people. It, it, it hurts psychologically and it also stigmatizes an individual. Many a times you would get people asking, why, why do you want to change what God has created? He had a reason of you being like that and he had a reason for you to have these breasts. And sometimes I challenge people by asking them, why did God give the doctors the knowledge to also identify this as a medical condition that could be corrected? And he also gave them the skill to be able to correct this condition. So a part of stigmatization is that the fact that people refuse to do it because they say we are changing God's creation, which is not the, it's not the truth behind it, rather that we are improving God's creation by improving somebody's health. In Insta, we've had also instances of our lady with gigantomastia and has been confined to a wheelchair because of the weight on her chest. So when it gets to such cases, one needs medical attention. One needs to go and be able to do their the, the day-to-day activities. And also one needs to be in good shape to serve God as well. Um, on social media, I have the Facebook page, I have the Instagram page, Gigantomastia Master Foundation. Twitter is also there, that we keep on sharing more and more of our success stories as we continue doing the surgeries and walking by.